lifestyle, trivia, and every other thing in between. This is Footy Moments with Nadila. Welcome back to Footy Moments with Nabila, your one-of-a-kind football and lifestyle show. Today, we'll be interviewing one of the biggest names in the world of football. who will be letting us into his life on and off the pitch. Are you wondering where your favorite ex-footballers are? Then catch up with them on Where Are They Now? Then finally, we'll be learning some fun stuff on Footy Talent Discovery. I'm your host, Nabila Fash, and you're watching Footy Moments with Nabila. Born in November 1982 in Benin City, Edo State, Yakubu Ayegbeni, popularly known as the Yak, is one of the most celebrated Nigerian football players. Yakubu started his professional career as a teenager with Julius Berger Football Club in Lagos, Nigeria in the Nigerian Premier League. He eventually got loaned to Portuguese club Gil Vicente in 1998. In the span of his career, this football powerhouse appeared in over 250 Premier League matches for Portsmouth, Middlesbrough, Everton and Blackburn Rovers. A feat that earned him the title of the third highest African goal scorer in Premier League history with 96 goals. He is the third highest scorer in the history of the Nigerian national football team and represented Nigeria at four African Cup of Nations finals, the 2010 FIFA World Cup and the 2000 Summer Olympics. It's always, you know, when you come to a, a stadium or a pitch where you've been, you've played already, you still bring back uh, good memories, you know. For me to be here today with this young kid, so it's an honor to be here, you know. Let me wait. To, to watch these boys, I've played here before. It's really, really good. You played for Julius Berger for a year and a half, then you went on loan, not just any kind of loan, internationally, like, uh, to Gio Vicente. When you heard about it, how did you feel? Yeah, I went to Gio Vicente. I think I was there for uh, a month, you know. And um, I remember then the president of Julius Berger there, I think, Lady Dama, he was asking for crazy money and uh, I have to come back to, to Nigeria. Then I think I stayed about one week or so, two weeks in Nigeria. Then I went to to Israel, Maccabi Haifa, for a trials. And uh, that was where Yak became the Yak. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. I keep telling everyone, the young kids. When you see the young kids now, you know that's the message I try to pass to the kids. You know, sometimes when you don't work in this place, then you think uh, you want to give up. No, you have to keep fighting in life if you want to achieve your goal. And I went to Israel and I think that was history. You know, I was there and for you like... you won medals. Don't be humble on this was, show. Tell us, just it was, brag. You, you it have was, all the right to brag. It was, it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was not easy because as a young boy leaving home from Benin, you know, then I came to Lagos. <laughs> it was quite boring, you know, stay in the camp, you miss your, your friends. Then uh, you travel all by yourself, then you miss home. You miss your friend, you know, you, you, you miss Nigeria. You miss your mommy's you miss, food. You know, <laughs> sometimes you're like, I feel like I want to go home. Was, you know, I'm like, no, I can't do that because this is my dream to play. I have to be focused. And I got the chances and I, I, and I took my chances. Yeah. Another thing was in year 2000, you went for the Olympics. Every player dream to represent their country in the Olympics. You were only 17. Was that a lot of pressure for you? I think I was one of the youngest there in the team. I know, I still remember. Yeah, we 17 have, uh, years Cel old. Celeste Mbabayaro, then uh, mm -hmm. Vitor Agali and Co. So being in the Olympics is like a dream come true. What, being growing up, you've seen the Olympics and when you're quite young, then 
in that in Sydney 2000. It was an honor. And I still got pictures of uh, Serena Williams. I think I, I, <laughs> yeah, sent, you should, I, I, you should. I sent to you Serena, <laughs> Serena Williams and, uh, and some Venus. of the Venus, you know, they were quite young, like me yeah. as well. Sometimes when I, when I see these pictures, you know, it bring crazy Memory. memories in your head, you know. It's an honor to be there. It's an honor to play for Nigeria as well. So is Yak a rebel? <laughs> no, <laughs> because no. I know no. there have been like some controversies um, for Japan and um, South Korea. Yeah, you were not included on that list to go to that World Cup. What happened? I played every game at the end. Uh, what's it called? Shaibu got sacked, and a uh, new manager came in. Then. Uh, <laughs> So they, they, said, this, they said this is Shaibu's boy, then uh, at the end I did. Mm. It's, it's life, you know, so in football, it's gone, it's gone. But I still feel sad today, you know, I think I deserve to yeah. to be in, uh, in the team, to be in the World Cup in, uh, in Japan, Korea. You know, maybe I only had one uh, World Cup in South Africa. <laughs> I wish I was there, it would be two World Cup for Nigeria. We're, you coming, know? <laughs> we're coming there. And yeah. again, now uh, for. Uh, was it Nations Cup 2006? Yeah. You decided to stay with Middlesbrough instead of playing for the Super Eagles. Yeah, I think uh, then the, 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 the stuff then, I think I misunderstand it between me and uh, Austin uh, Eguavoin, you know, and I choose not to to be included in the team and I choose not to, not to go. And there is a decision I made and I think the decision was right for me not to be there. If not, maybe you never know okay so then from 2006 then 2010 south africa you was... decided to say recently you said i'm not going to apologize for that miss yeah why why wouldn't you apologize to nigeria for that miss? i've scored so many goals for nigeria <laughs> and some let me let me put it this way i've scored so many goals you don't get credit for the stuff you have achieved for Nigeria. I've been with Nigeria when it's crazy out there in, in, the, in the world. We went to Sierra Leone when they were fighting war. We were there risking our life. And I played so well to, to play really good, play almost at the game for Nigeria to qualify for the, for the World Cup. And then I was dropped. But nobody came out and said, why did they drop this guy? I just missed one chance and the people still send me a message they said every that day. that chance was the easiest chance. Is like it? They, they said my grandmother could have just tapped that ball in. I've but missed, you missed chances. It. And they said you were smiling. Nigerians are still, they're still very upset. I wasn't, I keep... I, they said you were smiling. I, I, I still watch the clips sometimes, you know. In the stadium, it's just like this now. There's a big board. When you see there, there's a big board there, you know. You see the replay of the miss. I was there smiling, smiling outside but inside i was dying you were crying i was crying so but people still think i, I did it on pump no i've scored goals you know there is no way i would I, i'm telling you today i will apologize i will never apologize no chance no chance of apology no chance, Nigerians. No. no chance i've scored so many i've sacrificed my life for the country make people happy as well when they didn't believe we will qualify i've done it okay. one chance and then they still speak about it today 21 goals in 57 appearances for the Super Eagles. Yeah? Yeah. The third highest goal scorer for the Super Eagles. Third African with the highest goal in the Premier League. 95 goals. Yak, come on, brag. Brag. But still, they, they, they still think about the miss at the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to dwell on that miss. So, I'm going to dwell that I'm standing with this great man right now. That history, even when you're gone, your generations to come will see that like this man made history, not just in Nigeria but internationally. They said, because they said, legend never dies. Legend never dies. Yeah, you know, so, legend so. never dies. So, I, it's an honor for me, you know, yeah. to, to, to score goals and uh, to represent my country and uh, to see my, my kids, they all watch me play. That's a dream for me. You have a boy and two lovely girls. So 
will any one of them play football and carry on the Yakubu legacy? You never know, so Kwame, you know Kwame already, the boy he wants to play, so I'm there to, to, to support him, mm. you know, to guide him. It's not all about me, it's all about him. He needs to be ready as well, you know, he needs to fight for himself, just like the way I did for myself. And you know Kayla, she loves football as well, you know, so she even went on uh, Spurs, Tottenham tri uh, trials a year ago, and uh, she did all right. And uh, Katra, she loves netball, and she's quite into netball. She's good. I remember last season she won uh, Players Player of the wow. Season, and uh, she won about four Player of the Match, uh, of, 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 the, of, of the Match or so. Then she she did all right. So it's just this COVID stuff, you know. For me, I'm so happy, you know. Come in the background, you know. Sports and the kids, they love sport, sport. as well. It's really good. They actually got it somewhere from their daddy. <laughs> okay, so we know there is rivalry in football. When you were playing, was there a time where maybe your teammates, you know, you had any issues with your teammates or other players in other teams? Like, with, did you ever had any kind of problems with anyone? No, not really, not really, because even when you play, you all come, you you want to you want to play every week, then you have to show to the manager you can play. Mm. So every session you train every day, you train is like you're going for the war because you want to mm. play every week. Then uh, it's freezing uh, Saturday, you don't want to sit on the bench when it's so cold with your heart. Mm -hmm. So you have to train hard to be in the team. Sometimes you fight in training with the players, but it's, it's normal in football. Yeah. Let's go on a quick break. We'll be right back. We're still here with Yakubu Ayegbeni. Lose the Liverpool wrong winner like five times. Now Madrid go get Now Madrid. Now Madrid. Now Madrid. Jesse. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm a Chelsea fan. I wish I'm, I wish my club is going to be the answer, but you know. Well, we all know them now. One of the Madrid. Well, Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Um, I'm not actually a football fan, but I don't deal with my friends. They discuss about them. Um, if I'm a gate, um, Madrid. There are so many things we do not know about football. That was an amazing segment on footy on the street. I hope you learned something today. We are still with ex footballer Yakubu Ayibini. Yakubu. <laughs> <laughs> there have been so many memorable moments for you in football. Which one stands out? Still stands out. Yeah, I got good and bad ones as well. You know, so <laughs> the, the good ones. The Let's good talk one. about the good ones. Living Nigeria to Israel. Wow. So unbelievable, you know. Growing up in uh, Benin, I always say that already from Benin City, Edo State. When you're with your parents and uh, no shoes, then uh, you end up buying shoes now. You know, you can afford to buy shoes. Never forget about where you're coming from. Mm -hmm from Benin to Lagos, then Lagos to Israel. Mm. It was a great honor, it's a life changer for me. Wow. And then from there, I never stopped working hard. I work so hard and I, every year is a challenge. Mm. From one year to another. From there, after two, three years, and I moved to England, one of the best leagues in the World Premier League. And uh, my life changed. Yes, it did change. <laughs> yeah. Are you in the business of football right now? And if yes, what business are you doing? Yeah, I do. I do have my own uh, agency, Webri Sports Agency. Yeah, I got a couple of boys I'm looking after, mm. and I hope uh, in uh, one year and uh, they'll be ready and they become uh, one of the big star in the world. In this business, it's all about patience. Mm. You're not in a rush. You need to take your time, get the right players try to motivate these boys, try to believe them, try to make them believe when you work hard, you achieve your goals. You have to be disciplined, try to go to bed early, 
then try to eat the right food then the rest will be history and stay away from bad friends mm. if you want to achieve in football anything in life you need to differentiate yourself from the bad ones and then the good ones when you have the right people around you your family the right people around you you achieve your goal so you didn't mention this one but i know about it you're a fifa legend it's an honor you know to still work with uh, fifa you know it's just this covid stuff and uh, that's why normally maybe twice or once a year you know they, they got so many activities to do and uh, for them to still remind me still at knowledge i'm still exist and i still of course you're a legend you know <laughs> played for nigeria be at the fifa world cup as well you know it's an honor for me for fifa i swear to always call up for me to to support and then try to help the kids in the street you know, what would football be like without football? I guess <laughs> without this football, without, what would football without, be like? We're sitting down here today is because of this. Because of this. Without this, without we don't this, have you know, football. You, you see everywhere in the world, the people, they're not happy, they're fighting, you know, they're sad. But when, when you see this, it brings joy to people. You see Nigerians as well, you know, everyone is complaining, things are not moving forward. But when they see people playing this on TV, mm. they bring joy together. We sit here today and watch these kids. It's an honor, it's a joy for us to spend time, one hour, two hours with these kids. This is joy, I'm telling you. Okay. It's a happy place. Yes, we are still talking to Yakubu Ayedini. We'll be right back. segment of Footy Talent Discovery. We are looking for the next biggest name in the world of football. So stay tuned as we find the next Igalo or maybe Ienacho or Messi, who knows? Stay tuned. Hello. We are, you are back again on Talent Discovery. So tell us what has been happening in your football career since the last time we saw you. Well, I've been working hard to achieve my dream. Yeah, that's it. I heard you traveled to Turkey. Tell us a bit about that. I had a lot of experience and exposure in Turkey to play with like the Euro players in Turkey. It's a great pleasure for me. So now that you are back, what are you expecting to achieve in your football career? Well, for me, it's for me to work hard and maybe find a place in Europe to achieve my dream, to make my mom proud. Juwan, tell me what position do you play? I play as a centre attacking midfielder and a striker. And a striker. So you are one, all in one in everything. Tell me, who is your biggest inspiration? Eddie Nazard. Man. Eddie Nazard. So tell me, uh, are you going to play for Nigeria National? If that's what God wants. If that's what God wants. Okay. What club do you want to play in Europe? Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay. Next time you see me, you'll be watching me on the big screen. There you have it. Juwan will be one of the biggest stars in the world of football. Thank you, Juwan. See you soon. Right now it's raining, but we still have to do this. Eze Ebuka. Ebuka, where do you want to play internationally? Chelsea. You want to play in Chelsea? Who is your biggest inspiration? Eddie Hazard. Eddie Hazard? Are you copying someone? No. Oh, <laughs> I love him. You love him. Okay. I'm Ebuka. Very soon, you people will be watching me on the television. There you have it. Another super talent. Guys, this is Footy Talent Discovery on Footy Moment with Nabila. It's raining, so we have to run. Ciao. There are so many people that made huge contributions to football that we don't know about. 
and that was what we showed you on talent discovery we're back Yakubu. <laughs> thank you for being on this show thank you Nandila. if you weren't a footballer how would you have been that's why i choose football <laughs> <laughs> Growing up when I was born and I I knew already this one is for me. Really? And I was lucky enough I end up with this and I'm still in this business now. So no any other business except football business? Almost twenty years, you know. Not even an actor, maybe? No, no, no. I enjoyed this one more than other stuff. So this is my line of business. Yeah, could be. Try to get the young players, the young talented players. The yak. Yeah. You played all over the world. You've made some cool money. What do you spend your money on? What do you? How do you spoil yourself? I do like to go shopping sometimes to buy stuff. But I'm not crazy, crazy like. Cars? No, no, no I'm too. It, cars is not for me anymore. One time you had uh, a Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> I told you you need to brag on this year. Yeah, but it's good to, like I said, you know me all, you know me for almost ten years. I don't like to go outside and uh, showing up. I love, sure, I love, sure, I love sure. simple life. So, sure, so I enjoy the life I'm living at the moment. So, with my kids, Alvis, all over the world. Not all over the world. I was, I'm just being blessed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure a lot of upcoming footballers are looking up to you right now and they just want a word from you, how would you encourage them? Your final words? It's hard work and dedication. Never give up in Never your dream. Never give up. When you believe, you will get there. You will get there. Sometimes it might take a little bit long, mm. but the time will come. It's all about patience, hard work and, and dedication. dedication. You have to have the desire. Without the desire, there's nothing. Mm. Thank you so much, Yak for coming on Pretty Moments with Nabila. We wish you all the best thank as you, you move forward. Thank you so much and uh, thanks again and once again. Thanks for inviting me here today. It's a great honor to be with you today. Yeah, welcome. And I hope uh, everyone enjoy the show and uh, learn yes. from our message today. Yes, they will. Football careers do come to an end and at some point players will hang up their boots. Do you wonder where your ex favorite footballers are and what they currently do. You can catch up with them on Where Are They Now? on Footy Moments with Nabila. Jay Emmanuel Adebayo is a former Togolese professional footballer in 2001, he made his international debut playing with Meth in Ligue 1 against French side Social. In 2006, he was signed on to Arsenal Football Club for a whopping £3 million. In his time on the pitch, Adebayo played for notable clubs including Manchester City, Tottenham Hotspur and Crystal Palace in the English club side as well as Spanish team Real Madrid Turkish clubs Istanbul Basak Shahir and Kaseraspor and Paraguay's Olympia Asuncion. He was voted African Footballer of the Year for 2008 while playing at Arsenal and is on record for the highest paid player in the country's Paraguay when he joined Olympia Asuncion in 2020. He is currently Togo's all-time top goal scorer with 32 goals. Adebayo announced his retirement from international football in April 2010. He has committed himself to philanthropy in his home country. I hope you enjoyed yourself on our show today, Footy Moments with Nabila. On Footy Talent Discovery, Footy on the Street, Where Are They Now? And speaking to the legend himself, Yakubu. Ayegbeni. Follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram. Until next time, do not change that dial. Bye.